Dear friends, today's scripture reading remind us over and over again how important we are to God. One by one, he made us. He wants to help and heal us. In our human lives, we are not experiencing what God had originally planned for us. Through our sinfulness, we have become splintered and self-absorbed. But God never abandons us. God was willing to send his son to save the world, even at the price of his own life. In the gospel for this Sunday, Jesus and his disciples traveled to the Decapolis, a region of about 10 cities that was a center of Greek and Roman culture. We hear in the gospel that some people had brought a deaf man with a speech impediment to the Lord. They hoped that he would heal him. The man was not asking to be healed. We do not know if he wanted to be changed, but the people around him wanted him to be complete as just like them. We don't even know if these people or the men that they presented to Jesus were Jews or Gentiles. We do know that he was suffering and unable to communicate with those around him. And Jesus drew him aside to help him. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting touched his tongue. And then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be open. And immediately the man's ears were open, his speech impediment was gone, and he spoke plainly. Ephatha. Mark the evangelist makes a point of using an Aramaic word that Jesus would have spoken himself in, in praying and curing the wounded body and soul of this man. Once again, we learn that a crowd was astonished by what our Lord did. Making the deaf hear and the mute speak were more than a beautiful gift for that one person. It was a reminder that his life was given as a prayer and a restoration for each of us to have a full life that God always intends for us. If we open ourselves to God's mercy and grace, we can be transformed to the people that we were created to be in his image on earth as we prepare for our heavenly home. Let us listen to Christ and allow ourselves to be open. Ephatha. We hear St. James exhorting the members of the early church to have a clear understanding of that relationship that we need to have with other people. Jesus told those who follow him to love one another. This was meant to be no less essential than our own love for God. The way we see or treat those around us reveals our own love to Jesus. A Christ-centered point of view is often opposite the way in our secular world look at, looks at things. And just as we have problems with this today, they certainly existed in the early church. Otherwise, James would not have had to remind them to examine, examine their attitudes and their actions and change them Change them when they're out of sync with those of the Lord. If we say that we are the followers of Christ, how can we act contrary to his way? Christ loves us and wants our love, but he also wants his people to commit ourselves to, to love, really love one another. In the apparition of Mary at La Salette. Mary reminds us of the great news that salvation is ours 
for the asking. Evangelical Christians speak of accepting the Lord Jesus as our personal savior. The beautiful lady at La Salette uses different language, but calls us to that same reality. The purpose of her visit is that we might make a decision to turn our will and our lives over to the care of God. More wondrous, however, is the conversion of heart that leads us to the saving grace of God's reconciling love made visible to us in Jesus. The man in today's gospel is an example for us all. Like him, we cannot stop learning about our God and the proper use of God's gifts. We need to seek the ways God is enriching our lives. We must always pause in our thoughts to allow God to have some room in our thoughts. We need to keep our ears open to hear the goodness of others, to keep our hearts open to loving without making judgments, and our mouths open to speak words of goodwill that unite people and call the best out of everyone we meet. My friends, Ephatha, be opened.